Can you see it now, the share screen? Yeah. Yes. Thanks, Emma, and thanks for having us. So I'm here. I'm Jean-Marie Burel from the University of Dundee, and I'm here with my colleague, Frances Wong, who presented last time. So we worked on mainly images, but all the problematic that Emma indicated we it's not specific to the fair fight list domain it's it's happening everywhere so i've been working and been involved in data management and fair data for many years and i've been especially in the past four years as part of the eosc life uh, project and today i'm going to show you well emma presented all the fair principle and how we implement it because one of the things I've noticed uh, working on the various project is, is people lack example. What are the, the first thing we should prioritize? And I think the list of questions that Emma put at the end, say, which one should we pick? is can be difficult because you don't know necessarily how we will look in action. So let me make sure I've got... Uh... As Emma indicated, fair data is different than open data. Uh, for convenience today, and what we are look at, looking at on our side mainly is open data. So it will be easier to explain how we implement it. Sorry, I put an issue here. I need to go back. I can't change the slide at the moment. So. Okay. So I think it's uh, it's a journey. Being fair, it's a journey. And as Emma put it, uh, it rightly, we need to pick. We need to pick first something where you can start. And I've been, in, as I said, involved in many projects, and I've not come across. And our project cannot claim to be hundred percent fair. And I don't think that would be reasonable for any project to say we are 100% fair you make it's it's a long journey so uh us uh we we try to be fair and i think the the point that emma made is is a, an essential one is you need to be able to retrieve the data and the data can be found using doi doi is a digital identifier that is given when you publish an article in a review, but you also can your data that associated to the paper can have a DOI, and that also apply for, to um, an individual. Most of you will have an ORCID account, so that's how you identify. That can be done at the institution level. There's an identifier called ROR. R O R for institution that can be used. And you need to publish your, your data. So here is the law, the, the part we are interested in, and Frances and I worked on is called IDR. So that's an image data repository where we have uh, imaging data of very different kinds. So that could be images from human data, we have plant data, we have mice, uh, mouse data, so it's very diverse and we'll be happy to welcome some vitalist data uh, when you have all the metadata because that will be uh, fantastic for, for us to, to show that it's possible. We host images, but we also, as Emma indicated, you have a lot of uh, CSV file, PDF, Excel file. We also associated to the images, we can also host all those metadata. So it's not just the images that is important to us. We capture as much as we can. And there's another element here. So th those are like, if you, you probably know about Zenodo, Fixshare, but there's also another uh, people doing analysis on the data want also to host that. So this is, that has been developed during the life of this EOSC project is called Workflow Hub. So when you can actually pub, uh, publish your workflow. So how does it look? So this is an example of a different repository. So I've, I've taken few images repository to show you how they have implemented it. 
So this is for vo um, electron microscopy images, but you can see the, the data of the author uh, associated. You have the ORCID ID and you have the DOI for the data set. So this is how you can then identify the data. It's an example of, I was saying, we have people submitted data to the image repository. We created a workflow to analyze this data. That workflow also got a DOI, and then we can start linking all the pieces. So we'll have the publication in a journal that have a DOI, the data associated to that publication that have a DOI, and you do analysis on those data and you can also get to DOI. So the kind of the chain of provenance or sequence that is happening on the data can all be recorded and all linked in. And it's also very important when you want to, to get credit for your work, because in many cases, people that may analyze the data do not get as much credit that the one that I work publishing so if even in in the in your community that could happen somebody acquire a lot of information and a secondary result come from that initial paper that that important that people get the credit for that secondary work so as emma pointed out the there are few elements to to keep in mind you try to you need to try to record as much as you can so the four things to remember is who how what and when so that's the the point that of the fair principle and how do we what does it mean in practice so here is the image data resource so sometimes and in our in our case it's uh, it happened in, for many publication data do not necessarily need to live in the same data resource so you might have already existing resource i remember last time we looked at uh, phytocore i think it's called you, and you might have uh, information in another repository let's say like zenodo as long as you can relate them to one another it's important so here we have an example where we have images into the repository that we worked on, IDR. Empire, as I said, is a separate imaging repository focusing on one type of images, uh, electron microscopy images, but we can link the two. So a user coming to the, to the website can find that change of information and can access both with uh, a DOI. So you can see in that case, Empire as an entry to IDR. So both are connected, even if the data are hosted into different location. The next part of the, to be fair is accessible. So one key here is the API access and web access, because if people, if you make your data, they try to find them, but after that, they want to access it in a in multiple way. Do we offer, in our case, a web front end where you can actually hear we're browsing plant data. So those are the, if you can see the URL at the top, idea openmicroscopy.org. So if you are interested in browsing the the data please do so at any point in time you can view the data look at visualize the images and but you will see that they are very diverse type of data in that repository but interestingly after that you have information you also display information about the author the point i was making here you have uh, you will have a reference a publication doi the license, as Emma indicated, how you can use that publication. And interestingly here, the, the DOI for the data, as Emma indicated earlier on, not all repository give you a DOI to, for the original data. So the DOI here 
correspond to the data images that have been given to you. And you can see a lot of uh, alter type. I'm just showing a, a very sh small sh snapshot of the metadata, but we we store a lot of information about, for example, the Im imaging method, yeah, a lot of information about ontology and associated metadata associated to those data. So which will allow us after that to do cross-study investigation of or, or for someone coming to the to the website. If you're interested, I could do a, a demo afterwards if you are a live demo. Is you can find information in, uh, by using those um, those fields, those annotations. So it's it's essential to submit as much as you can when you um, publish your data. Here is what we can do from an API access. So this is an example of the Terra Ocean project. So that was a, a project that ran for two years. People were on the boat acquiring sample from plankton around the globe. I think they are in the second trip at the moment. So they were collecting images and collecting information about the, the water, a lot of what is the environment of that sample. And interestingly, also in the, giving us information of where it happened on the globe. So when you, you look at those data and say, okay, I've got all those number, what does it mean? It's difficult to tell. But because we have that information also associated to the data, we can use the API, so the image data resource, offer you to query the system. So in that case, I'm querying the system hosting the data. I'm querying via code. So don't be afraid if you are not uh, familiar with uh, the coding aspect. But by writing some a bit of a uh, few line of code, we're capable of actually plotting where those images uh, were taken. And obviously this is a screenshot, but if you were clicking on one of those red dots, it will bring you back to the images into the system. So you can then make sense of what uh, those number, so if I go back, uh, sorry, if I go back here, what those number were meaning. So if you click on the red dot, you will be brought back to the visualization of the data. And that's what the API offer you to make sense of the data and compare. And in that case, we also have metadata associated in a completely different uh, repository that is not maintained by us. We just, uh, we're giving the link. So all we have more information around about the sample as a, um, about the acquisition, the concentration, acidity of the water, et cetera, that is stored elsewhere that we can connect to. Okay, the make it interoperable. So that was the human and machine. That's kind of example that I'm showing you. The vocabulary that came very often, ontology. So that's what the focus last time and as Emma was indicating, for the Fair Fatalist project, as part of the Fair Fatalist project, there's a development on ontology. And that's quite important in order to communicate after with other resources. So what does this ontology allow us to do is, in that case, we're looking at cell images, but that could be, I would say, any images or any data. They have been annotated here in the case of gene, we have, but we also have a phenotype and associated with phenotype, you can find the gene symbol that is recorded. Oops, sorry. So you can find more, uh, more data associated to that gene. So it allowed you to expand your, your search by doing all the sanitation. You ask a question about a a very, basically a specific phenotype and then you have a chain of knowledge and the same will happen in any field whatever the field astrophysics 
phytolith data, gene data, human data, it is in a sense the same. The more you have information, the more it allows you to discover other study not necessarily linked to the original problem you were looking at. And in that case, we also have the phenotype ontological term associated to the phenotype itself, which allowed us to again do more search. So yeah, you can see associated to that gene, we have a list of study. So IDR22, for example, doesn't appear in, in that list of terms. So you can actually start crossing over potentially other study and allowing you to do to further investigate your repository. So the last part of being fair is reusable. And that's only come because we have, if we put all of that information, we are allowed to repeat, reanalyze the data. So as um, Emma pointed out in a previous talk there, People didn't necessarily express how, where the data were acquired, the methodology used to acquire the, the process. And I think that is one of the things that is essential is if someone wants to try even just to reproduce what you have seen or do it sim something similar in a different context, they will not know where to start. So it's a waste of time for them and also a waste of of general effort because as a community is to grow the knowledge and to grow, to progress and and get better and that by putting those key information along the way allow you to to bend to to increase your own knowledge but also teach and directly the the community so I will start with the last example of reuse. So this data, again, we host in IDR, so that is, uh, we link uh, sequencing data. In that case, you'll have, you'll have a virus element that correspond to a, a, a given sequence. So when you look at those images, you don't necessarily understand what, what they mean. And they, the, the group, as part of the 4D Nucleon project, developed a specification. So it is, the aim is to link images data and genomics data. So that's what we host in IDR. So again, what can we do with that table? It's very difficult to understand. So it's very similar to the location we were looking at previously. We have store the images and we have stored a lot of that uh, say information about those images a little as you see the you see for example you have information of the roi so the, the roi will oops, sorry will be this little spot associated to a little circle you've got information according to that specification but what do they mean and you know you have a, a, a sequence here which is more genomic data and what you want is enter and understand that Oops, sorry i've got a lot of background noise here so a, a group that is in pittsburgh developed a nucleon browser so which allowed you to actually link uh, if i go back link interpret that sequence that is here that I'm highlighted with my mouse, hopefully you can see, that will correspond to a certain section of the image. And they allowed you to actually move over one part of the, in the sequence, and they will bring the corresponding area on the image. So that's been done by a group completely external to us that have developed, they use the published data and they link the two all the genomic data that they have, the more information about the um, about the nucleon are hosted in a completely separate um, resource, and they use the the table as a bridge. Uh, they use sorry, sorry that table for bridging the two resources and allowing you to then 
mouse over an element here and find the corresponding images or part in that, in the, in that images. So you could imagine exactly the same thing on, in, in, in the domain when, the, when people put uh, the data publicly available, other researcher might actually look at those data and find, could find some very interesting uh, pieces of information as well. I think to conclude is, is uh, trying to be fair is a, is a journey. It can be fairly long. So us, we have been working on the image data repository now for since very actively since 2016. So it's entering seventh years to enter that uh, level of a more, more established uh, platform. We are also now recommended by many journals. So the problem of which journal should I pick and how the imaging community now, a lot of uh, journal ask you when you publish a paper is to submit your raw data or the process, depending of what, what of the data used in the publication. So that could be a point to look into as part of the community could, will the publisher request when you, the author to publish their data? So that's a, a process that took a bit of time. I know people doing workflow, the, the analytical part, they are entering the same process. So they journal, then discussion with journal, and journal will now uh, ask for people to deposit the analytical um, pipeline to public repository which a with a DOI so people can run again the, uh, the analysis provided. So a lot of the tools are moving in that direction. So there's a, a lot uh, to, to learn from, from this community. And so it's, and the data, how to manage your data as Emma uh, indicated um, earlier on, keeping them on your, our drive or local system doesn't really help the, the rest of the community. So publishing them as early as possible is, is essential with as much data as you can. Making your data fair uh, all the time is time consuming at the moment because there is not necessarily all the tool to, to annotate all your data and uh, all, all the data. What our recommendation to people is you might, you will, all the work that we've shown, seen with IDR is when you publish the data. So when you publish the data, there is a, a certain process that people need to follow. When they submit, they need to give us uh, the, the ontological value, some and and so analytical result if they have any they, they they have a step a process to follow but the recommendation is to keep that to capture that as you go along it might not be in a fully fair manner as you go along during your your work and you might not all the data that you uh, use will be uh, will be necessarily used for the publication but at least if you've got if you got that information when it's time to publish, you have kept either a CSV file and and then you can you're able to submit that. So I think when your ontology is ready for for usage, you you probably won't use it all, all the time. You might only use that part when it's time to to publish. But at least keep all the information you have. Uh, maybe. A, as you go along and do the translation to the ontology when it's time to publish, because otherwise it might take a bit of time for you. And uh, to, to, it, it doesn't happen in the imaging field. People only do it when it's time to publish the ontological aspect. They, until we build all the tool by building, I mean, the building the software that will allow them to, uh, to do that in a more efficient manner. It's still a lot of manual effort at the moment in all the community, but it's it's getting better. So I think I will stop here and I will 
yeah as overall it might be time consuming but it's a rewarding uh, effort especially when you start seeing people reusing your own data in a completely different uh, manner and uh, yeah i will i'm sure francis would be happy if we have a very rich uh, fatalist uh, study that will be submitted to us would be more than happy to to publish it and our system is open source and free of charge so it's not something to worry about thanks jean marie you have some really interesting examples there i love the example where they people were coming in where it wasn't their data and they were linking to another data set i think that's really yeah. interesting yeah, and, and I try, I looked at um, your uh, phyto, phyto core. Uh, phyto core, yeah. Yes, uh, there is already some information in that domain about the location, the, I'm going to stop sharing, around the location of the data, around uh, who, who did what, but I couldn't access it via the API because I was interested to, to do something similar to... Yeah what we did with uh, the Terra, Terra Ocean, but I, I couldn't do. And, and I think mm. even if you start uh, a new repository or use another repository, it's still possible to link to an, ex, uh, an external one. one. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. not as long as we've got the URL and that URL persists, we, we have, we are we're able to inject uh, that information. Mm. Thanks, that's great. So has anyone got any questions for Jean-Marie? Everyone is very quiet today on a Friday afternoon, <laughs> which is absolutely fine. Yeah, we stay here anyway for the discussion. Yeah, we stay here. Still people popping in and out, so I can see everyone's having a busy afternoon doing things. Well, thanks so much, Jean-Marie. I, I find it really, I found Francis's talk last time really interesting and yours equally interesting just to see so many sort of clear examples. Uh, I think makes it really um, easier to understand like what you actually, what, what fair data is all about. That's really great. Thank you so much. Um, right, so 